And now is the second day of the World Economic Forum on East Asia 2012 in Bangkok. And here with me, I have Mr. Sebastian Moreau, the Executive Director of France International in Cambodia. Sawadee ka. Welcome to Thailand. Thank you. <laughs> that sounds like ambassador a little bit. Um, um, I probably have to ask you first. So you come from France, right? Yes, I'm French. Okay, so uh, and how long have you been in Cambodia? I've been living in Cambodia for the past 18 years. Okay, so you have this France International Organization, which uh, can you tell me a little bit about the mission and the purpose of your organization? So, France International is a social enterprise that's based in Cambodia, um, but we're working across the region and all the way to Northern Africa and Central America. So, it's a Cambodian model working with marginalized children and youth. So, street children, working children, migrant children, children in prison and drugs. So, all the kids have been pushed on the sides, and our job is to bring them back to society so that they become productive citizens of their country. Are you housing them too? There's some housing for some of them, but our job is mostly to rebuild the families and the capacity of families of taking care of their own children. So if we house them, it's only for a little time right. until we find a family structure. Right. So uh, it means there will be a lot of activities that uh, you have to go out and educate people and training sessions? Absolutely. It's, uh, it's everything is about step one is saving their lives. So we go where they are in the slums, on the streets, in the prison to make sure they're okay. But the second step, the most important, is education. So it's non formal education for the young children, bringing them back into public school. For the older, uh, it's about vocational training so they get jobs. And for the families, it's rebuilding the families and the capacity to make money so they can take care of their own children. So you were in Cambodia for 18 years. I got to ask, when you first get there, it's for business or leisure? I came uh, as a traveler. I was going to live and work in Japan and I just intended to stay only a few weeks in Cambodia and just go through and, and you just never left and I never left <laughs> 18 years and uh, also one of your project for the Friends International is the child safe network yeah. can you tell me a little more about that it came from this uh, realization that NGOs and governments are disempowering the communities mm. the people are really in charge of children are communities the parents the neighbors the village chiefs the sellers everyone living with the kids are the ones in charge but what happens is that they say well it's not really my job it's the job of this NGO it's the job of the government so they're not taking responsibility anymore so our job here what we want to build is the capacity of the communities to identify kids at risk and know what to do when they see the children so that they take back the power so we don't have to do the job anymore and we can retire. So how, how do government deal with the um, foreign organization such as you were helping with kids and local people? They, the beginning was a little difficult because they, wasn't, they weren't sure who we were, what we were trying to do. Right. But proactively, we've been seeking collaboration with governments and governments in Cambodia, Thailand, Laos. We work very closely with the governments. So now we see ourselves and they see us as very strong partners. And together we have built uh, policies, we have built systems that protect children better. So they are, they are very much part of the Child Safe Network, for example. They, they support all that. Okay, um, I was sitting in in the session about tourism in East Asia and you were one of the panel. Can you tell me a little bit that, uh, because we have been talking about your organization, maybe I want to tell the audience a little bit how you involve in tourism industry in Cambodia in general. Well, tourists are, are very important people. They come into a country and they come for the majority of them, with very good intentions, uh, they bring development, uh, they support, uh, they, they want to support the people they visit, um, but often they don't know what to do right. when they see situations of crisis, when they see a child begging, when they see a child hurt. Uh, they, they're not really sure what to do. So either they don't look at the situation and turn a blind eye and they walk away, which is very bad, or they do something and often something that's not exactly right. Was that you 18 years ago? That was me 18 years ago. That's how I started. I started on the streets not knowing what to do. I brought food to the kids. Right. But I realized that bringing food of the kids, I was keeping them on the streets. True. So I had to s change my mind and build something more constructive that was actually helping the kids move away. So every time you give money, every time you give food to the kids, you actually maintain their 
them on and the street. Yes, right. Absolutely. And it's difficult for me then to come in and say, come and get an education. Because right. they say, no, I just made $5. Thank you very much. I'm very happy where I am. So it's not helping them. It's breaking their future. So we need to, to explain this to the tourists because it's, it's very difficult. It's a very emotional action that they, they want to do. They want to help. So how do we make sure that this positive energy is channeled in the right direction? And that's what the Child Safe uh, Network is trying to do by a campaign with seven tips to tourists to help them become child safe uh, travelers. Um, in this session, they were mentioning backpacker and of course a lot mm. of countries in, in the tourist business, tourism business always look down on backpacker in general, but do you have something positive to say about that? I think backpackers are actually misunderstood. Uh, one, they stay longer and they spend a lot of money because they stay for a long time. Right. And where they spend the money is really interesting because they spend the money at the roots level. At roots level. It's, it's a grassroots uh, shops, the, the little hotels, the, the sellers on the street that make money. So it's directly impacting the people there. And that's a fantastic input. The second thing is they are looking for new directions, new adventures. So they're opening up markets and it's really important to see where they're going because you, you will see the future trends. For example, uh, in regionally, it's the, the backpackers that open Laos. And now Laos is starting to become this new destination. Right. They're the ones who broke in first. Walk into a little alley, a little exactly. village. And so for me, there, is, there are two things I need to look at. Is the direct contact with the local communities is risky because they can have some negative effects. So we need to prepare the local communities to be able to face these new um, visitors and, and what they're doing and how they're interacting. So there's a training to be done with the communities. And then you need to be preparing the countries that are opening up. The next big country is going to be Myanmar. It's opening up now. Right. They're absolutely not ready to <laughs> get all these tourists. So you need to set up systems to protect the children, to protect the communities really fast. So to protect them from risk, but also f to help them get the maximum benefit from this fantastic influx of people. 18 years in Cambodia, how much does it change the society in terms of how they're taking care of children, specifically that you are looking at right now? Um, Cambodia is changing really fast. When I first started, it was a poverty situation. So kids were sold, uh, kids came to the streets because they, they needed to feed themselves. So poverty was the number one issue. Now it's a developing country really fast. They still have, it's a transition now. They still have uh, the problem of poverty, but they also have now the problems of, uh, of kids from more developed countries, the, mm. the middle class using drugs. So the, the, the shifts and the changes in right. the population are very interesting and you need to adapt to all these new trends all the time to be able to respond. And it's, uh, it's a challenge, but it's also what's so exciting. You said that your organization also uh, work in Thailand too? Yes, correct. How many years? About the same time? No, we started in 2004. Mm -hmm. We actually started by following the Cambodian children who are coming to Bangkok to beg on the streets. Ah. So we work with the, those kids first. Right. And then we work within the government shelters for these children because the government you know, tries to rescue them before sending them back to right. Cambodia. So we work with the governments to ensure that they come back in good conditions. Then we started working with Burmese migrants and now of course naturally with uh, the Thai community so we work with Thai children Thai families and do exactly what we do in Cambodia is trying to give them a capacity to care for themselves how big is the issue of child exploitation in this region in your opinion it depends what we talk about it's uh, it's huge uh, exploitation can be seen in oh so many ways has you do you think it has been handled correctly so far I think there's been a lot of effort put. I think we often uh, put the money and energy in the wrong sector right. because we're not really looking at the real problems. We're not looking at the holistic. We're always looking at a small uh, issue that's often very um, highly promoted by the press and by the donors, right. but it's not reflecting the actual issue. So you really need to take a step back, look at the globality and the holistic issues, and then address strong currents that will then change massively the problems. You were talking about uh, putting money at the wrong place. Um, you were mentioning in your article about the charity business. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, um, 
you have a lot of uh, travelers, tourists, that are coming to countries like Cambodia, like Laos, like Thailand, and are struck by the situation of kids and naturally want to do something. Not knowing what to do, they try to have a direct interaction. Some people use this to make money. So they're basically using the kids to get money from the tourists, and that's a charity business. So for example, orphanages right. that are open to tourists coming to visit and take photos of the kids, leave a little money and leave again. It's extremely bad for the children. Right. The kids don't get the money because obviously you need to look poor and sad if you want to get the money from True. the visitors. So True. you will not improve your, the situation of the kids. Right. You will improve the situation of the owners of these orphanages. Uh, you have uh, tour operators that organize tours on dump sites, in slums, and, that, and that's like a human zoo. It's, uh, it's I think, extremely shocking. It's, uh, and it's an experience for the travelers, yes, but it's actually a very negative experience, I would say. So how can we eliminate that? You will say policy maker, the government of the countries? I think the government has an important role to play in, s in setting standards and policies that will protect their population. Um, and that needs to be implemented. So I see the Thai government is very strong. I see the, the Cambodian government is building the capacity. Lao government is, is taking this into account. So there is a move for that. Um, and I think there's a role for just the general communities to also say no. And so that's part of the education of the communities to protect themselves and say, this is acceptable, this is not acceptable anymore. And they have the right, it's their lives. So the government has to be strong. The government has to be and strong. Have to be really active. And the NGOs need to support that. Okay. So you were also mentioning in your article that tourism actually helps preserve national heritage and the environment. But uh, we can see, especially in developing country, a lot of places is going another way. Mm -hmm. uh, tourism even take part in help damage the place to decide. What is your take on this? How can we make it on a positive note I in developing countries? In developing countries, it, it's always on, on two levels. It's a double-edged sword. Um, take, for example, the temples of Angkor Wat. Um, the number of tourists coming there obviously is extremely good in the sense that it forces the government to protect this space. Mm. The problem then is that the number of tourists coming is actually hurting the temples themselves and you have entire temples that are now severely damaged by right, the number right. of tourists. So it's all about um, how the government or the people in charge of these sites or uh, it can be a historical site, it can be a natural site, how they channel this masses of people and that needs to be organized and needs to be done in a proper way and you cannot just open and just let people come in because that's the, the risk but if it's managed properly then it's extremely good for the environment it's extremely good for the history of the country so it's ab all about the management it's and all the about policy. the management one last question for you if you can say anything to the leaders of the country in this region what do you want to tell them about the issues that you're concerned the most right now I think the message is it needs to be done um, as a partnership. And it has to be a, a multi-sector partnership. It cannot be done by the government alone. It has to be with the NGOs that are there to support. Then it needs to be done with the corporate sector and it needs to be very clear f to the corporate sector that they're not here only to make money, but it's also there to support the development of the countries where they're working. It needs to be done with the communities. They're never uh, they too often forgotten. They need to. Be, they need to be part of it. It to be hands on and access. It needs to be. A, it needs to be a real discussion. It needs to be a real respectful, common uh, work. It cannot come from the top down. It has right. to be done together. Right. And this, if this is done, will achieve it. fantastic results. Well, thank you very much thank for you. your time, and I hope you have a pleasant stay, and also hope you have a safe trip back to Cambodia. Thank and uh, you. I wish we'll get to see you again when you come to Bangkok Certainly. next time. Certainly, thank you very much. Certainly. <laughs>